So here's one you definitely want to be familiar with. This is the Arroyo Willow. There's tons of different kinds of willows. They are a great indicator of water, riparian areas. When you see willows, you know water's nearby. Indians use these extensively, especially here in the southwest. So you'll notice lance-shaped leaves that are wider at the base than they are at the top. Just an overall green color. Um, nothing really too interesting on, you know, lighter on the bottom, darker on the top. This is sometimes uh, misunderstood or misclassified as mule fat. One of the differences, we'll talk about in the, that in another video, but one of the differences is if you squeeze this a bunch of times, it never gets sticky. Whereas if you do that with mule fat, it does. Bark, the older the parts of the tree, gets really rough. Younger the portions of the tree get nice and clean. Used for all different kinds of things. So I'm just going to take some slices off this tree. Remember when, always be respectful of the plants and the, the area and the environment. If you're going to take cordage, just take what you need. And don't ring the tree, so don't go all the way around the tree taking the bark off. Take what you need here and there and let the tree heal back. And so try to do this one-handed for you guys here. Okay. Let me just take two and I'll use that for demo purposes here. Oop, don't want a short one. Maybe do one more somewhere else on the tree. I'll get one more piece and get right back with you guys. Alright guys, so got a piece here and just gonna basically strip this outer bark off. Let's be gentle with your cordage. Try not to break it. Obviously, the more sections you have to splice together, the more likelihood of some type of compromise. Sorry for the airplanes. I live near a airfield. All right, so oh, I guess what we need at least and so I'm just going to break down these strands a bit more. Okay guys, just going to briefly show you how to do reverse wrap if you haven't seen it. So if you want, you can use a stick if you want a loop at the end, otherwise you could just tie it off or, or start, but you want your ends at different lengths, so when you want to attach additional cordage, you're not trying to do it at the same time. And all you're going to do is wrap this stuff forward, both the both ends. Probably seen this on a lot of other channels, but you wrap forward and twist it back. And I'm just going to do just a little tiny section here for you, just so you can see it again. Uh, I prefer the thigh rolling method, but as I don't have any water to wet my pants, this stuff does not roll very well on dry pants, so I'm going to just do it a finger roll this round. And you can see that, that that one looks like it's almost wanting to break. Not the best piece of cordage, but just wanted to kind of demonstrate you can see what that wrap, what that cordage looks like. So there we go. It's pretty strong stuff. <clears throat> see, it'll probably break that weak point if I pull here. Let's see. Yep. So 
Good stuff. All right, guys, so here's my willow bow. You'll notice the ends, both sides, are the full length of the bow. That's to compensate for the wood quality of the willow. Again, uh, lightweight, so it's easy to carve on, but equally you don't get as much draw on it, or as much poundage on it, I should say. But they'd say for most of these, you get about 25 to 30 pounds of pressure. And I'd say that's about right. I'm not a huge bowman, but from what I would guesstimate, and just to show you it works. Again, one of the things that I learned out of Paul Campbell's native California native book was how to shoot these things without a ledge. And so basically you just use your finger as a ledge and wrap your other one just slightly around the top just to kind of keep it in line. So I'll just show you, so give it a go here. There we go guys, Willow Bow.